everybody, to another edition of Pillar to Post here on the 97.3 ESPN YouTube channel. Mike Gill, Tom Morgan. we got intern Mike in today, and uh, we're going to have him be a new part of the cast for as long as his internship's around, because he's like the stat boy here. He can give he's us a all walking the... encyclopedia of wrestling. Last week, Tom Morgan incorrectly mentioned that Naomi had won three uh, Divas championships. Well, she was going to win three. Right. She was going and, to win And, and i got to be honest with you. I thought he was wrong, but I wasn't a I thousand thought I was wrong. sure. But Mike is here to make sure that error doesn't happen again. Nope. Never happened. Never I got happened. I got wrong material, so I'm in a new place where I could get all my information from. All right. So, uh, Mike's a big wrestling fan. During the sports bash, during the commercial breaks, you can literally see us writing up our own cards mm -hmm. and uh, stuff during. So, he, he will be very entertaining here. So uh, it's good to have intern Mike as part of Pillar to Post. He's behind us. He'll smack up beside our heads. Yeah, when we're wrong. wrong, he can give us a little smack. <laughs> All right. Do it New York style, you know? So <laughs> let's, uh, let's first, uh, it's Tuesday. We're recording on Tuesday, as we typically do. And this will post uh, in just a little bit. But uh, not that you care about that. Extreme Rules, let's get a quick little overview. Um, overall, I gave it about a B minus C. Yeah. It was okay. I know he said a B yesterday when yeah, we was, talked to him. I was right around that same yeah, grade. Right. Yeah. So where were you? Uh, I was about a B minus. I, I think that, uh, you know, again, you had uh, the storyline building with Randy Orton versus Seth Rollins. You had that RKO ban, but then Seth Rollins used the RKO, so you create a little bit of controversy. The story is building up with Kane. Uh, as well as whether he is full authority or not authority, which we're still kind of confused about. Yeah. Um, but, you know, overall, I, I, I thought the Luke Harper, Dean Ambrose street fight was a little long, but I thought it was it was entertaining. It was something different. It was something I, different. I, I love the concept of how they had it going on for about, what, 10, 12 minutes there? Right. And then all of a sudden you see them drive out of the building right. and it <laughs> continue about an, an hour. SUV, right, yeah. About an hour <laughs> later. And somehow, some way, Harper's the one driving it when it leaves the building. Right. Yet... Dean Ambrose is driving it when it comes back. Now, who would not? Who would have got that detail? <laughs> yeah, it's it's walking encyclopedia. <laughs> I didn't notice that, by the way. And, is, it, and I'm surprised Luke Harper even knows how to drive. Let alone, right. I mean, jeez, he he's, drives he's, with his eyes. Just yeah, kind right. of just exactly. a thousand eyes. That was a pretty cool concept. I mean, uh, overall, some good matches. I, the the Sheamus Ziggler match was a good match, sure. but the end was it was. Asinine yeah, sure. for all it is. Arsenine. Arsenine. Well, well the yeah. stipulation was just stupid. stupid. Again, yeah. yeah. So. yeah. Um, that, uh, what else was, uh, you know, you got New Day. Now, I like that New Day won. I like how they're playing off the crowd saying New Day sucks. Right. They're actually New playing sucks. into this. Last night I thought was hilarious with, um, I keep calling him Consequences Creed, which he Xavier was in Woods. TNA, but Xavier Woods, when he said New Day rocks. Right, right. And they were like, what? what? I think they're, they're, they're a great you know, heel team to have yeah. this belt now to maybe give you know, that tag team division something. So I like the fact, I don't love the team, but I like the fact that they, in their role, I think is a good fit for tag team champions. Yeah, I think as a heel, they're great. And, um, you know, everyone already, when they debuted, it was dumb. It was a cheesy but thing. That's going to get them over. That's right. Get them go over, you know, and uh, and they're eating it up, which is the, the right thing to do. Xavier Woods, by the way, behind the mic, was great last night on Raw. Excellent. I thought it was really good. He was hilarious at the pay per view. Right? Yeah, he, he's the fans are starting with the chant, and he's yelling at them, like, why? What did we do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, it's just. It's great, and I, I think that, you know, a Tyson Kidd needs some more building up a little bit, you know, and uh, it'll be interesting to see what they do with them. Uh, Cesaro and Tyson Kidd, basically a face now, I guess, right? So that's, like, that's what it seems. It seems, like, confusing. In, in but, like, yeah. a well, and they, span, somehow they became faces. Yeah, and right? they have Natalia dressed heelish. I mean, she's got the hair slicked back. Right, she's yeah. got the black. She's looking pretty good, that Natalia, all of a sudden, good. out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other match that I thought was pretty, um, you know, good, which I was surprised, was the big show... Uh, Reigns match. I thought yeah. that they did a good for as as uninterested that you're into the Big Show character. I thought that the match was really, really good. The question is, Big Show, he wasn't there last night, so right. I mean, I guess they're trying to say that he got so beat up to try to put Reigns up higher. But yeah. I thought that was a pretty good match. But where um, does Big Show go from here? I don't think anybody cares. But we obviously saw Reigns now put himself into a triple threat. Honestly, other than injury, I don't think we've seen Big Show have a day off in 20 years. So I think he's due for a. <laughs> Uh, Monday night off, but uh, yeah, no, I think I think this is a, a proper bill for Roman Reigns. You know, winning the Royal Rumble, nobody really agreed with that, and uh, you know, now that he's he's starting to really get his uh, single. Well, let's going let's talk about him real yeah. fast. I think he's interesting. Okay, so he was 
a popular figure in the Shield. Yes, right? Yes, right. Maybe one of the most popular factions that has been around in you know quite a long time. They break up. He still has this Shield identity though. He comes out to the same music. He wears the same gear. He still yeah. comes out of the crowd. Is that hurt or helped him? I wonder because it seemed like the people liked him. Right. It's not that they don't like him. That Royal Rumble, where they wanted Daniel Bryan, WWE ruined it by bringing Bryan back at the Rumble. They should not have done that. Yeah. And I think Reigns would have been fine. Now, it's almost like they had to drop him all the way back, and almost like they're doing with Ryback right now, and build him back up. Mm-hmm. But does he need his own identity away from the Shield? Well, what I felt hurt Roman Reigns was the fact that uh, he had all this momentum at the end of last summer, and then he got hurt. And oh, he yeah. was out for three months, and then it kind of felt like when they brought him back to many people that they rushed the push a little bit. They really and, did, and, and they had him on those backstage, you know, uh, interviews where he's not very strong. They yeah. put him on the yeah. yeah he right. even messed up one interview at a pay per view. But yeah. do you think he'd be better off repackaging himself with different music, not coming out of the crowd, wearing he still wears the riot gear? Yeah. Do you think that would help him become it? Because the other two have become their own characters. Right, right. No, I, I really I really like what he's doing right now. Um, you know, because it, it, it's... I don't... I mean, I, I listen to the music and I do think of the show, but I don't really associate it completely with it now because it's been so long. Um, but I think See, that, I still think of the Shield, man. Yeah, and and you know, I Russell, do miss the, the Sierra the, the music, Hotel. Yeah, the, the music. Yeah. I, go. The music I think needs to change, but I still like the whole concept of coming out of the coming crowd through the crowd day. is always a cool thing. Yeah, and and I think Roman Reigns too. Uh, you know, his mic skills still are a little rough. They're getting and, a little yeah, bit better. I thought better. last night when he got up on the announcers booth and started talking, I kind of had. A little bit of like when The Rock broke away from the nation of domination. And, yeah. you know, when he first came out, he was still like not where he is now. But right, right. I felt last night was the most comfortable. He kind of felt yeah. like, you know, I can be a little bit more freelancing here. It seemed like right. they gave him well, a little bit more chance to freelance. Well, sure. he tries to be a little more funny now. In the beginning, it was just like, oh, robotic, big, tough Believe guy. Believe it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So... He's now in this triple threat match. You got Rollins, Orton, and Reigns at Payback here. Yeah. Was it Payback? Yes. Yeah, right? right. So the encyclopedia has spoken. It is he can name payback. every yeah. pay per view, <laughs> probably card for the last fifteen years. Yeah. I don't uh, know about that. <laughs> so Payback is 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 this triple threat match, and uh, I'm really I would assume. Rollins hold this belt at least until SummerSlam. Yeah, you know, it's very interesting. I, I would think that he would, and I think we would probably see a Rollins Brock Lesnar match at SummerSlam, possibly. Um, you know, but I, I'm I'm kind of intrigued at what they could do with Randy Orton and what they could do with Roman Reigns. Now, Randy Orton held the title for too long last year uh, as a heel, but uh, you know, I don't think that Roman accurate? Reigns. Yeah, Randy Orton had the title last year. Too long. Yeah, he. he just had, making sure. It seemed like yeah. he had like three different reigns. Yeah. Well, no, because title. he wrestled at WrestleMania last yeah. year with uh, Bat- against Batista. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, just kidding. I'm, uh-huh. I'm kidding. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. And the encyclopedia is off. I, I, I will yeah. say this. I think you know Orton, where he was kind of like, eh, just kind of your um, uh, your steady guy. Like you know, he's going to give you the best effort. He's going to give you everything, but. He's not the guy you really want to be. I've kind of changed my opinion on that. I think since he's come out with the elbow pads, he changed his look back to like when he was younger. He's got that going. I think he has emerged more into a guy that I'm more intrigued by. I, I don't yeah. know. For some reason, he put those elbow pads on, and that made me like buy into I don't know why. But it's all on the it elbow pads. It, it, no, it really shows you, though, the music, the entrances, right. the attire. I mean, look what they're doing with Naomi now. She's right. got um, the different music. And she's got this attitude about her now. And, you know, right. that's changed her. You know, Seamus, they've done it with him, where he's completely a different character. Oh, yeah. The music, uh, his look, you know, it's all different. I could deal without the braided beard, though. Yeah, how does yeah, he, like, bad. tell WWE uh, talent, I will do this and keep my beard like this for yeah. however long? Or I mean, even the think about that. that matter. Yeah, yeah like, yeah. you can't change that look. You saw right. Paige wanted to get tattoos in... Uh, in Total Divas, and they were like, no, you're not getting tattoos. Right. Like, yeah. you know, they own you. Well, I think at the end of the day, yeah, it's up to Vince as far as appearance is concerned. Um, you know, appearance is everything with your character. I don't think we'll see a title change in at Payback, um, you know, because it's such a, a I agree. pay-per-view. I think that if we're going to see a title change, we're going to see it at SummerSlam, although we could be surprised. 
Uh, but I, I would have to agree. I think you know Seth Rollins will continue to hold the title somehow, some way. Uh, will hold the title. Okay, I agree with that. Um, what about the IC strap now? What's going to happen? Daniel Bryan yeah, very interesting. did not wrestle, and obviously there's something wrong with him. I think does, we talked about part timers before the show. Yeah. Is Daniel Bryan number one going to be kind of morphed into a part timer, mm-hmm. and number two, does he have to give up the IC strap like he did the heavyweight? I think he's just hurt. I think he's just obviously hurt. Yeah. He's definitely hurt. Well, they uh, put yeah. they put Bree on last night to kind sure. of speak for him. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely going to be one of those things that depends on how severe the injury is. If if it's something he can come back within a month, then uh, I'm, maybe they'll keep the title on him. But if any more than that, they'll probably have to take it off him like they did to Barrett last year and have some kind of Well, you wonder, say, like a tournament or something did like they that, yeah. put Reigns in WrestleMania over Bryant because they knew that Bryant was not able to... Go long term, well, and that they for his safety in that match against Brock Lesnar. Well, they yeah. did the same thing with Dolph Ziggler for a while, you know, because he wasn't being pushed because they were so afraid he was going to get another concussion. Yeah, uh, and so we don't know, know what the injury is to to, um, to Daniel. Bryan. To Daniel we Bryan. assume it could be something with the neck. It, it's got to yeah. because there was some well, thought some he was going to have like a second surgery, but right. he just rehabbed it, and then do you think they rushed him? Back. Oh, some people suggested though that he might have had a concussion when he was in Europe. Yeah, and, and they, that he had some concussion. They've, they've denied that vehemently. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm interested to see because Neville is similar in size to Daniel Bryan, but much more muscular. Mm-hmm. He's a high flyer. He can, you know, do everything. You wonder if. Daniel Bryan is almost getting kind of pushed aside, and Neville is obviously took his place in the IC match last night. You saw him in a in a very good match uh, in the King of the Ring tournament. Right. You wonder if he's the next guy that say, "All right, he's bigger, he's more durable," sure. and fans are obviously liking him right now. Well, you know, I think Neville uh, his, his character in itself is probably not as big as, as Daniel Bryan, but it took a long time for Daniel Bryan to build his character. But Neville's got skills in the ring that are just absolutely awesome. Uh, the and you saw this from the top rope, he came on Luke Harper. That, that flip that he used, it was just unbelievable. What do they um, call that? It was a uh, Sunset Flip Power Mom. Whatever sunset they, flip what's his, What mom. is his, the finishing that uh, he gets up to the top and he oh. just flips up and I mean, uh, it is the red, the red arrow. arrow, the red arrow. The red right, arrow, right, right, yeah. Right. But it was, it was so cool to watch and I love watching his matches. I mean, he doesn't even awesome. have to talk. He doesn't have to even work the Not crowd. Not great on the mic. He doesn't have to be great on the mic. You know, he's, he did it English. Yeah. Right, but he, it, it, he can be great in the ring. Like, Dan, like Roman Reigns, is okay in the ring. He's a big guy. He's got that Superman punch going on. You know, he does the spear. But yeah, he, he needs something. to have something else. Neville doesn't even have to talk. He can just wrestle. Does Roman Reigns have to do this every uh, time I don't, I don't like that either. I, I can deal with the whole uh, punching the fist to the ground and setting up for it. But the the triggering, I mean, what is that? Uh, yeah. I mean, he did that back in The Shield, too, if I, if I recall. Well, he was doing it the yeah. other night in the match against Big Show where right. he's like, you know, like, yeah, I'm yeah. like, come on, man. Seriously? Like, yeah. yeah. But, you know, the Neville thing's pretty cool. And, and with Neville, too, I'm interested to see, and I know you don't get to see NXT. I know you watch it, yeah. who the next guy coming up is. Because Neville, to me, while he was very exciting, there are better, there are better, more compelling characters in NXT that I'm waiting to see what they do with. And I'm wondering if Finn Balor, Kevin Steen, uh, Sami Zayn, right. make their way up sometimes to get in the SummerSlam picture. I, I think he'll first be Finn Balor. I think they want to keep the whole owens Sami Zayn rivalry going for a little bit more. So I could see that one, uh, those two staying down for like the summer and continuing that. And then maybe in the fall you start uh, integrating them in. That'd be cool. Well, it's a slow push. You know, I mean, they're really slowly putting these wrestlers into the, uh, in the WWE scene. They're making sure they're really seasoned. And Neville's... A, a great example of that because they took their time with him. Everyone was hoping that we would get in, and now he is seasoned. He's ready to go, and he's in the semifinals of the King of the Ring. By the way, NXT is coming to Philly. Mm. When's that date? Sometime in May. I'm not sure. Encyclopedia. You let us down. May 16th, I believe. It's May 16th. <laughs> I think that's what it is. I'm not 100% sure, but May 16th is also WWE at Boardwalk Call here in Atlantic City. For those of you watching in the Atlantic City area, uh, that is a house show that's going to be at Boardwalk Call May 16th. It's also the Day of America on tap in Seattle City. Get your tickets on 973ESPN.com or, or Sojo1049.com. Sojo 1049. Yeah, what a cheap yeah. plug. Cheap plug. But, <laughs> Intern's allowed to say that, not us. But, <laughs> but um, the NXT is coming, and I believe it is the same weekend as the... There's a pay-per-view. I think they're... Did you tell me that? Yeah. The the night after, the 
May 16th is a Saturday, so May 17th is payback. Right, so payback is the 17th, and the, the NXT TakeOver in Philly is, uh, I think it's at the, in Upper Darby, I can't remember, but uh, check it out, NXT's coming to Philadelphia, so uh, if you get a chance to go see that, man, I, I would love to go see that that show, That that's really, uh, you know, a big time right now, that, that, that show is really, really solid, and you know what, as you mentioned, we'll see when they start putting some more of those guys in, but there's a lot of depth. That right. That's good that there's some more guys behind, but what they have right now, you know, I don't know about you guys, I didn't like the Cena-Rusev match at um, at uh, Extreme Rules, Extreme Rules right. and I'm not looking forward to it again for the fourth, the oh, third yeah. time. The I Quit match, and this thankfully will be the last, um, but I think this will be, I'm hoping at least, I think this will probably be the best match out of all of them. It's got to be the best. I mean, it's the I Quit match. Uh, I hope that Rusev wins this match uh, because he needs this. And I think that this could be, and if, you know, correct me if I'm wrong here, but what if, what if this would be the beginning of a long, slow heel turn for John Cena? He actually quit a match. We, we've yeah. been asking for, we've for been, like five or six years. You're right. It hasn't happened. But wouldn't that be a great a character start? tweak, change, some something. sort. He actually quit. Last night, I, you know? I, 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 did he slip a little bit? He, he kind of... He mentioned something about a strong-handed, like, uh, pips, pips, pimp slap or something. Then yeah, yeah. It yeah. was kind of like he's like, oh, that probably wasn't something I should call. He called Rusev a pimp? But, pimp hands? Yeah. Well, yeah, like, yeah, uh, he yeah. pimp slapped uh, Le- right. Le- Lana. But, oh, you know, but, but it, it also seems that Lana and Rusev are kind of uh, uh, having some dissension. Uh, yeah. I was saying this last night watching it with my brother. It seems like this is turning into kind of like a... Jeff Jarrett, Deborah's kind of thing, or Mark uh, Merrill's yeah. Sable, where, right, where yeah. the 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 crowd's falling in love with the beautiful blonde. Right. She came and out waving last night. Lana was great. Yeah, yeah. everyone she's was like, "We want Lana." She hates the crowd. You know, you stupid Americans. Now she's waving yeah, away. She and, she yeah. I yeah. thought that was a that's that's a good pull. The Deborah, right. especially when Deborah used to want to pull the the puppies out, and yeah. Jeff would put the <laughs> jacket on her. And, you know, back in the Jared attitude, the and, King's like puppy. Yeah, you know, uh, she'd be out there like ready to go, and she'd be in her bra and stuff. And it was that those were the days. Uh, but, uh, that's the attitude era. But uh, you know, that's definitely something there. That uh, I, see, you you said Rusev. Now it's interesting. He had an undefeated streak, and then he's lost to Cena the last two matches. Yeah. So his last two matches, really, he has, has losses. Yeah. But can you see Cena winning and Lana causing the loss, and then that would be the split there, and Lana pairing? With somebody else and causing Rusev to then feud with that. But how would she interfere? Like it's an I quit match. I mean, someone would have to literally say I quit. Like they would have to put in a chair or or a sledgehammer or whatever. You know, I mean, if it was a regular match, it'd be different. You know, but uh, how you writing that card? I have no idea. I'm trying to envision how they get either one of them to quit because it seems more likely that John Cena would would. Pass out before saying I quit. If yeah, and I hope it's not submission. some dubbed in thing like they've done. In the, who, what, what match was that where they dubbed in the I, I quit? I think it was the the mankind one where his that's right. where his kids were like crying yeah. inside or something. That's right, right, yeah. So the Cena Rusev uh, trilogy will end at uh, payback, and uh, yeah. we'll see what happens where that goes. We'll preview that as it gets a little closer. Um, you know, I think also um, you know when you look at. Brock Lesnar, who is not around, when does he come back? And one thing we talked about before the show, do you envision possibly Brock coming back and winning Money in the Bank? Is that a possibility? That's a great scenario. He has scenario. the briefcase, and doesn't you don't have to have the briefcase on right. TV, and it's just like a surprise whenever he shows up. Right. And, and maybe that's how they re-bring Brock back. Because I'll tell you, without ha- having him and Heyman around the last couple of weeks, Stuff. It is kind of uh, like or lack or of Heyman, something. period. Well, I, I yeah. miss Heyman. Yeah it's, a, yeah, it's been kind of weird the last three weeks. When do you way. when do you do you think Brock SummerSlam or is there another time? Uh, I would like to see him come back. I like your idea of Money in the Bank, and here's why: because he was suspended after losing his WWE Championship uh, on Raw after he went on that big tirade and and you know, sure. suplexing everybody. Uh, so what a great time to come in and take the briefcase. And he's a part-time wrestler, so he can come and go as he pleases. You never know when Brock Lesnar is going to come back with the briefcase. Uh, I think that's great. Um, you know, usually with the briefcase, you get guys like an Edge or a Seth Rollins or even a John Cena. 
uh, winning the briefcase because you're like, all right, well, they never know. They could they could wait till the match ends. I could see Lesnar just coming in right in the middle and just suplexing everybody and then just be done with it and win the title. Uh, so I could I would love I love that scenario, but I definitely see him wrestling at SummerSlam. I definitely could see him going against Seth Rollins, Brock Lesnar being a true face. I could definitely see Paul Heyman turn on Brock Lesnar for the second time in history, by the way, uh, against Seth Rollins, and he goes uh, authority or he goes as a manager for Seth Rollins. Yeah, I, I, like, I told you that I thought that uh, Seth was cashing in at WrestleMania. What I'd actually like to see more happen now with these Money in the Bank guys is them to like stop carrying the briefcase around with them. So then it's almost like uh, they try and make us forget that they're even the Money in the Bank champion. And then all of a sudden, like, six, eight, nine months later, they spring it on us and, like... Oh, he still had the briefcase. Right. And in this case, Brock Lesnar winning the briefcase would be perfect with that. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, he think, wouldn't be around. And, he wouldn't be around. Yeah, I think the perfect scenario with that would be, I don't know if you just said this, but like not have him actually in, scheduled to be in the match, right. but it's just he shows up and just uh, beats the hell out of everyone in the exactly. money in the bank, That'd climb up and, City. and, and yeah. take Take it away. I think right. they even came out with a t-shirt for that. They should have. It was Super hashtag awesome. Suplex City. Um Real quick, a uh, couple quick notes. Vern Gagne yep. passed away, and uh, I always give you my WWE uh, pick of the week, uh, my WWE Network pick of the week. And uh, one of the things that I watched, not this week, but recently, number one was the Hall of Fame induction of Vern Gagne when he got put in the Hall of Fame. And if you know, remember that there was a lot of friction between the McMahons and the Gagnes was. because he took a lot of the wrestlers from the his AWA, AD, AWA area, right. but they, you know, they eventually put him into the Hall of Fame and... A lot of people really credit him for Hulk Hogan. You know, he yeah. kind of uh, had that whole thing going on. And I saw Hulk Hogan tweet about Vern Gagne. So uh, when you talk about legendary families, you know, the Gagne it's family pioneer. is definitely one of them. So yeah. uh, sad news. On, on a side note, though, I, I found it interesting that when you YouTube Vern Gagne, it's the interviews of people talking a lot of trash about Vern, including Hulk Hogan, Harley Race. Well, he's a very uh, stubborn yeah, guy. Very stubborn guy, what, you know. But uh, 89 years old, man. He lives a long life, so rest in peace. He's a true legend. Yeah, and uh, another thing. How about uh, Smashing Pumpkins frontman Billy Corrigan <laughs> has become the lead writer, senior producer. It's the best news that TNA has had TNA. in months. <laughs> well, he was interested in buying TNA. Yeah, he's a big uh, wrestling fan. He, he has his own yeah. promotion, right? He does have an inter uh, independent promotion, I believe. S somewhere out yeah. there. Yeah. I think it's in tr I'm a huge Smashing Pumpkins fan. Like I saw too. Pumpkins, I saw Zwan, which was the side band for for uh, Billy Corgan when the Pumpkins broke up. I love the Pumpkins and Low Corgan. I am now intrigued to see how he takes these characters because he's going to be the lead writer, he's going to be the lead um talent developer as well. So right. Right. I think that is compelling enough to make me want to see what he does. Yeah, he's supposed to helps. start immediately, right? Yeah, he's going to start immediately and I think uh, any Anything can help at this point uh, with the TNA product. But let me, I, I want to say, that I, I know, I asked you yesterday, uh, Mike, you haven't watched in about a month. Because it's on Friday. It was on Friday nights on right. Destination Well, that's America. why I stopped watching it's SmackDown. It's tough. It, it is tough. Channel 172 yeah. Although, I want to bring up that, the SmackDown, mm -hmm. which apparently, if you're not watching SmackDown, now you are kind of missing out on something. You really are. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta watch there SmackDown were certain things again. that happened before uh, Extreme Rules that I was not aware of right. that happened on SmackDown. Right. So it right. seems that you're going to have to start watching SmackDown now. But TNA moving to Destination America on Friday nights, really, they were on Thursdays, and I was watching it. And it was on Spike. And it was on Spike. I had the, it's not the channel so much, because I had the channel. Mm -hmm. I could DVR it, and I had it. It's the night. It's the night. Yeah. Friday night, I can't watch it particularly. Then Saturday, Sunday, the weekend's here, then I'm Monday night's Raw. By the time I get to it, it's like, oh, man, I'm two or three weeks behind. But from what I understand from people who watch it, and the few times that I have kind of gone in and on my DVR... They're putting out a good product right now. They have good storylines. They have good characters. They have good stuff going on. It's it's a shame that they are on that night and on that time right now and that channel for for all. Why do you purpose. think they settled for Destination America? The initial thing from Dixie Carter was that they were going to make TNA its number one property, and that was the promise was. You're going to be on, and it's and the it's number all one. All it's the number one show on that channel. Well, it's all the air. But the problem is, originally it was all right. You're going to get Friday night. You're going to get Saturday morning. You're going to get a replay. You're going to get best, and that is all kind of going away already because Discovery, who owns Destination, is already seeing the troubles in trying to sell advertising 
for wrestling. Yeah. So they're not getting the viewership that they thought. Right. They were getting a million viewers on Spike. Yeah. 980,000. Right. Somewhere now they're about the 400. Now they're at about the 350 000. to 400,000. Right, yeah. So the, the, the viewers did not all come over and they can't get the advertising. So now they're starting to pull the programming. And I, I'm hearing that they're also influencing some of the matches and who some of their champions are. Yeah, like, that's, right. so that's what happened with yeah. ECW with the, the Nashville Network. Well, yeah. and even so, the revenue's not coming in either. So now, production crew, wrestlers aren't even getting checks. That, yeah, uh, that was a problem. They're, they're yeah. making more uh, doing independent shows in between the yeah. Impact tapings right. than they are actually with uh, Impact Wrestling. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a shame what's going on because they do have good wrestlers. They have... You know, we talked about this before, but, you know, Kurt Angle's their champion over there. I think still, I don't know if that's changed. Um, they had Lashley, who really improved from when he was WWE. Mm-hmm. And then the first time he was in TNA, he went away and came back. He's really improved. The Hardy Boys are still over there. Um, the, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, EC3, who was in WWE Developmental. They have another guy named uh, uh, Brent. Uh, I can't think of his name. That's a Brand. Brand? Bram. 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 Yeah. Very good character. Um, you know, they MVPs have MVPs over there. MVPs over there. Yeah. Um, they've got some really good talent and wrestlers, the guys that can go, but it's a shame that uh, it's not getting the notice that uh, that it should. But uh, Yeah. Well, I think that's exactly the problem, is that it's not getting the notice. The marketing's not there. I mean, if you tune into Destination America, yeah, the marketing's there on that channel. Um, but, you know, I haven't watched TNA in a while. So because it's Friday nights or whatever. DVR. Yeah, DVR. Yeah, you know. Tuesday so. would have been the perfect night for them to put that on. Sure. One of the one of these times, one of these companies is going to realize yeah. Tuesday is a good night to have the product on because the, of the week. That, yeah. And then in the fall, you're not running up against like the NFL or mm-hmm. the NBA mm-hmm. right. and getting a better rating. Yeah. Uh, intern Mike, we asked you uh, during one of the commercial breaks last week about the last what was it eight champions? Yeah. Back to the belt split. Who were the last champions? Oh, uh, you mean uh, prior to Orton unifying them? Yeah, before the the, the titles uh, got unified. Well, you had uh, Orton and Brian uh, flipping the title back and forth in the fall. Then it was it was uh, John Cena. He won it from The Rock. Who won it from Punk? Who won it from uh, Alberto Del Rio? Who who, who who won it from El Patron? C- from Cena? Who had won it from Del Rio? Who won it from Punk? It was just like, it seemed like it was a summer where Punk, Cena, and uh, Del Rio were trading the title back and forth in that whole summer of Punk thing. There's a reason I asked that question. Because the summer's coming up, do we see a lot of changes in the championship like then, or do we see one steady champion through the summertime to get us to the Royal Rumble? Well, the WWE in the last year has really uh, experimented on guys holding the title for longer periods of time. I think think it's better that way because then it it makes the title seem more important. When you're having to trade it back and forth every two, three weeks or every pay-per-view, it it really seems like it's... It um, does, but at the same time, it it brings out the excitement too because the story changes. You know, you have a new champion. Someone winning a new title, whether it's a heel or a face, is an exciting thing, but you're right. I mean, the importance of the title. You know, you can do the flip-flop of the Intercontinental title. You can have your tournaments. You can have your 24-7 on the line stuff, um, but with the WWE Championship, there's a mystique behind it, you know. So, All right, WWE Network pick of the week. It's going to be live Thursday night. Yeah. Jericho after SmackDown interviewing Stephanie, Stephanie McMahon. McMahon. Yeah. So uh, we'll be back with uh, some thoughts on that, I'm sure, next week. You don't have the WWE Network still, even though it's free this month. What are you watching, Mike? I'll be wa- I'll be watching that. I'll also maybe I think they're they're if I saw this right doing a marathon of Legends House, which I didn't watch the first time, so I'll check that out. There you go. See Pat Patterson cry, and they got a new yeah uh, WrestleMania, or I think they just call it twenty four WWE twenty four. Coming out, uh, following around Roman Reigns on WrestleMania Day. So it's cool. It's like a that. thirty for thirty kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. And they have new programming. I started last night the uh, Jerry Springer Too Hot for TV WWE version. So they're putting a lot of new programming on uh, for the summertime here. All right, that's another edition of Pillar Two Post. Use the hashtag Pillar, the number two post, and we will be back here uh, right after Raw next week on the the ninety seven three ESPN YouTube channel. Tom Morgan. Intern Mike, and I'm Mike Gill. We will talk to you next week on Pillar 2 Post. New Day Rocks. Go